Welcome to the art project. If you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new here, please subscribe. And I'm just going to start off by saying I don't know anything about what I'm doing here. So if you do, if you know what I'm supposed to be doing, leave a comment down below. Um, the only thing I really know is that what I am doing is called a neurographic. Uh, I actually heard it called a neurographica which I think is a better name, but that might not be right. So leave me a comment down below if you know anything about neurographics. So uh, the way I did this is I started off by drawing a border around my paper just the width of the ruler. You can do it one inch or, or whatever size you want to, but I just did um, the width of the ruler. Uh, and you don't even have to do a border if you don't want to. Just whatever your teacher tells you to do. Uh, then I traced some objects. I traced a couple of rolls of tape to get different size circles and a big jar. And then I made squiggly lines, just squiggling around the paper. I did try to go through the circles, and I did try to make them cross. But I tried to make uh, fairly wavy, squiggly lines. Um, now, the more lines you do, uh, the more complex it's going to be to kind of finish up. But um, I think also the more lines, the more interesting. So it's kind of a toss up. Um, I did this with a fine point Sharpie. That's the uh, Sharpie that your mama writes your name on your underwear before you go to camp with. Um, but I'm also going to use an ultra fine Sharpie, which is more like a pen. Uh, and you'll see that in a few minutes. Everywhere there is a, an, an intersection, I round the corners off. So essentially what it does is everywhere that there's a connection, I make a, uh, a sort of a thicker intersection by rounding the corners. Now I'm going to show you this up close in a few minutes. There's a kind of a particular way to do it. You're not making a circle. You're making a little shortcut uh, in a way. Now, why is it called neurographic or neurographic? Um, there's some other names for it too. You'll have to maybe do a Google search and you'll find it. Um, well, it's supposed to have something to do with the brain and the various synapses and neurotransmitters, etc. <clears throat> so, the thing about it is, though, it's, ex it's um, I, I don't know, maybe it's not extremely complicated. I, can't, I think it depends on um, which side of the fence you land on. If you are doing this for art, it doesn't have to be that difficult at all. Um, basically, what I'm doing here is the basics of the whole thing. Um, but if you want to uh, be real scientific about it, well, in that case, you're going to have to do some research because I honestly don't know. Um, it was some interesting stuff that I read, but again, I, I'm, I'm kind of afraid here of, uh, misquoting or misrepresenting this. So I'm just going to kind of stick to the art side of it. Um, one of the things that I do know about this is that it was very, um, kind of intuitive and it was very free, uh, which meant that there wasn't a whole lot of stress. Um, at the most, it was very time-consuming because I went through and I made all of the little connections uh, rounded off. Here's Here it is, me rounding them off. Watch. I basically just cut the corners. I, I put the fine tip sharpie in the middle of a line that I drew, and I made like a little shortcut to the line beside it. Look at it real close. I didn't speed this up because I wanted you to be able to see uh, exactly what I was doing here. So every little intersection, now this is very time consuming, but most art that's any good is kind of time consuming. Um, Mona Lisa wasn't made in a day. The Sistine Chapel wasn't made in a day. Uh, this particular project took me probably about three or four days total. Well, <coughs> excuse me, about three or four class periods total and uh, I suspect it would probably take uh, students about a week to do so connect each corner 
and just round it off so that the inside of each line ends up being more uh, of a bubble in a way. So as far as I can tell, the only rules, uh, if there are any rules, you can you know kind of do this however you want to do it. But sort of the main rules are that you have these wavy lines and they can be very tight waves like I did or even tighter maybe or very loose waves. It's up to you. And then you come back and you round off the corners. You don't even really have to do the circles. Uh, I've seen several of these that had circles and I just thought they were great. So I added circles to mine. Um, the circles I, I watched in one video. Uh, there's lots of videos on YouTube about this, not just mine. Uh, I saw in one video where the lady was um, using these circles to symbolize different things, like one circle represented herself, one circle represented her trouble, one circle represented God, and there were all of these connections between her circle and God's circle and her troubles and how they were working them out together. It was therapeutic for her. Uh, so... Again, uh, Google it, uh, do a little research. Uh, this is what it looked like. Uh, not, uh, I'm not quite done with all of the um, connections. I still have a lot of connections there to uh, fix, but this is kind of what it looked like uh, before I started painting it. Now, when it came to the painting part, uh, I used watercolor. You can use acrylic, you can do this in oil pastel. Uh, you can do just about anything you want to. I chose watercolor. And uh, I'm not a great watercolorist. I know about one technique, and that is uh, fill the space full of water and then fill that water full of color and just l watch it run and spread. Uh, that's my watercolor technique. Uh, so for each one of these, uh, and I, you can see I put together groups of spaces. Again, it's very intuitive. You figure out how many spaces you want to put together or don't um, put spaces together. Just fill in one space like I'm doing right there. And then I put color around. So I filled each space with water and then I just put a little bit of color in there and I let it kind of run together. My, uh, my kind of mode of operation for watercolor is just to fill in the edges and let it run to the middle. And then some places where they were really small, I, I filled it all in with um, paint of one color. So I kind of worked around the paper so that uh, one place could dry while I worked on another. Uh, so I'm skipping around a lot. You can see that I I started with that circle up at the top, and then I went over to the other circle, and then I'm doing sort of the bottom middle, and and then I'm skipping around over here. That way, when I put two puddles of water next to each other with two different puddles of ink, they don't run together. I, I don't put them next to each other because I don't want them to run together. I wait until they dry, and then, like that circle up there is dry, so I can fill this particular space full of water, and I can... Uh, fill it full of ink and it doesn't run into the next space the ink or in this case the watercolor I mean will only run into the water it only swims around in the water it won't escape into the next square if you just or the next square the next space uh, if there's no water in it it's kind of a fun technique it's something I've uh, you know I've just kind of done for a while but I haven't really studied watercolor so I'm not not an expert watercolor and you can even see where it has it has spread into other places because the it seeped into the paper but I just filled it full of water and then I put some ink in it and I let it kind of run and blend uh, kind of a wet on wet technique uh, I really kind of think that this is um, uh, unless you get really complex with it, unless you actually look up pictures of the brain and start drawing pictures of the synapses and neurotransmitters and all of those other things that are in the brain that I don't know what they're called, uh, unless you do that, it's really sort of abstract expressionism. Um, I'm 
I'm making squiggly lines and maybe that somehow or another represents or somehow or another expresses what's going on in my mind at the moment. Um, maybe if I'm calmer, the lines are less squiggly. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. It kind of depends, I guess, on how you feel, what you're going to put down, and therefore you've abstracted your feelings. You have expressed your feelings in an abstract manner. I don't know. Again, like I said, uh, I'm just doing the project. I thought it would be fun. I thought they were real pretty, the ones that I saw online. So I encourage you to look them up. And uh, and then one more time, if you have any ideas or suggestions or comments about what I'm doing wrong or what I should do differently or about what Neurographica is really all about, f please feel free to put them in the comments down below. Um, I'm learning and I'm teaching and I'm interested in hearing what you have to say. So, um, again, this is a pretty easy project but it did take a few days so um, take your time don't be in a hurry uh, if you're in a hurry you're gonna mess stuff up um, take your time make sure all of the little intersections connect properly and um, maybe even fill yours full of more lines than I filled mine I don't think there's a whole lot of rules when it comes to this um, one of the other self-imposed rules here was I tried to make the circle mostly cool colors and then mostly warm colors outside of the circle. But that was just me. That's not necessarily a neurographic rule. There it is. Uh, I was pretty pleased with the way it turned out. Uh, my students have not done this yet. I'm pretty excited about seeing what they do when, when their time comes. Um, if you do this, tag me in your Instagram uh, share it on Instagram and tag it uh, please give it a thumbs up subscribe and uh, go make some art